In the USA, religion and science are battling over the beginning of life. Half of the American population, some 120 million people, believe in biblical creation, that life, the universe, and everything in it was created by God in six days. They reject the word of science that humans evolved over millions of years from other species. Christians are fighting to have biblical creation taught in schools. Science is fighting to keep it out. At stake are the hearts, minds and souls of America's youth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In Exodus chapter 20, it says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and all that in them is. Six days. It doesn't leave any room for anything else. It doesn't leave room for millions of years. According to the Bible, it was six days and six 24-hour days. This is the, the worldview known as biblical creationism. There's another worldview, though. And I like the way one writer equated it. He was an evolutionary writer, but he had the right picture. He said, the theory of evolution, it's like a universal acid. It permeates every aspect of our lives. It doesn't matter where you go, whether you go to the supermarket, or whether you go to the school, or whether you go to the library, or whether you go to the church. It's a hot topic, and it permeates everything. The, the teaching of evolution, when it's drawn out to its logical conclusions, uh, number one, it, it draws out that there is no God. And the Christian says there is a God, and we, we worship a God, Jesus Christ, who died and rose for our sins. And number two, it leaves us without any hope for the future because it takes away our origins from God. And everything is only natural processes, and there's nothing intrinsically metaphysical about the teachings of evolution. At the core of Christian belief is that God created life. He breathed into man the, the breath of of life. Creation is the essence of who we are and our worldview. On the other hand, evolution strikes at that worldview, saying that creation was an accident. It simply happened. And of course, that attitude negates God. Many theories are spent on the origin of man. Some can trace some name to the family tree. But for me, I'm content with the blessed Bible plan. And you can't make a monkey out of me. Some believe that the earth started from a little spark. But they can't tell whence came the spark, you see. Many folks had the birth prior to old Noah's Ark. And you can't make a monkey out of me, nor you can't make me out of a monkey. Nashville, Tennessee's capital city, is known as the home of country music and the Athens of the South. But it's the Old Testament rather than the Greek classics which is currently informing the state's legislature. The Christian lobby are supporting a bill in the Senate that makes it illegal to teach evolution as fact and threatens dismissal to those teachers who try to do so. The anti-evolution bill passed its first reading with only one vote against. Stirred by the determination of its supporters, politicians have been quick to embrace the spirit behind the bill. While we had this view that there was indeed a creator and he was behind things and man was ultimately accountable to him, there was a restraint upon our actions and we were a much more virtuous and civil society. As we've lost that, we've become uh, a more uh, violent country uh, with greater crime, greater teenage pregnancy. And it'll take some time, but reintroducing again that possibility that there is a creator will have its effects. Tell me, what's the biggest excuse for atheism the world has ever known? Care to make a guess? It's something that's continually proven false, but scientists still cling to it because it's the only way they can get rid of God.
Welcome to Truths That Transform, the daily radio outreach of Coral Ridge Ministries. Stay tuned for insights on changing the world for Jesus Christ. Preaching against evolution through its own radio and TV stations, the Christian Coalition has touched millions of the faithful, including politicians at state and national level. We do support the legislation wholeheartedly. The reason we support it is that we have legislators uh, for the first time in maybe two decades, willing to tackle religious issues, important moral issues. The importance is that they're willing to address them for us, uh, whereas they had not been for a couple of decades. Opponents say the bill is unconstitutional and it tries to scare teachers out of teaching evolution, period. This bill is being promoted by radical religious right groups who are disturbed and angry that creationism is not allowed to be taught in science classes in public schools. Hedy Weinberg of the American Civil Liberties Union in Nashville claims the bill is an attempt to bring biblical creationism into the classroom. This violates the American Constitution, which prohibits government from advancing any religious belief. For Weinberg, the bill is also part of a nationwide religious revival, which equates evolution with the moral decline of America's youth. There is poverty, there is crime, there is a alienation that's occurring in this country and in this state, and some people say the best way to handle that is to bring religion back into schools, to make sure every teacher has a Bible on his or her desk in order to ensure some calmness and some ability to take young people and have them become participating members of society. If I thought for a moment that that would work, I, I might have to rethink my position. However, that really does not directly deal with the serious social problems we face, poverty, crime, unemployment. Until we deal with those problems, we're always going to have scapegoated issues of should, science be, should evolution be taught in the science class. Um, and the radical religious right finds that they are able to manipulate the fears of people and talk about if we had religion back in school, we would be a better society. What we're seeing today, we saw it 71 years ago when the Tennessee legislature passed a law prohibiting the teaching of evolution. So the language of this bill is a little bit different. It's more involved in semantics, and they talk about evolution, teaching it as theory, not fact. But in fact, the purpose is the same, and that's to remove the teaching of evolution from the classroom. Weinberg will now try to convince senators to vote against the anti-evolution bill. She sounds out the politicians she hopes are sympathetic to the cause. It could be the climate, the political climate that we've got today that the Christian right has created has allowed for all of these people to think this is the way I can appear popular and get votes and assure my re-election or my election. And that's the thing you've got to look at. It's not necessarily their activity, but the climate that they've bred that has been, you know, from, from which that miasma has created this uh, stew that we're in. Depending on how this legislation ended up, the fact that, that textbooks which are now being written for science, because the theory of evolution is a basis for all modern biology, and if you in any way put a damper on the ability to teach evolution in biology, we're going to have to rewrite textbooks in Tennessee. And you're not letting people think. Right. They, they're supposed to think and learn by by deductive reasoning and logic and not just by blind faith. You don't teach facts, you teach a way of thinking. In Memphis, there are a lot of people who think Elvis is still alive. <laughs> and you wonder, will we start to have to teach both the school that Elvis is alive and the school that Elvis is dead? And this could be, this could be the next step. Who knows? Well, it's got all kinds of ramifications. It's, it's just intellectually dishonest.